When you're looking at the run-up in a price point, you must be exhausted by the fact that everyone looks at this basically as sort of an asset to be, well, betting on and, and exchanging hands. But does it make sense to you? Are you worried about any leverage, any volatility? So the price appreci appreciation, of course, is going to draw attention. What we're seeing now is an expansion of Bitcoin's user base through the introduction of a spot ETF and a directly regulated way for new entrants to hold Bitcoin asset. I believe that this gives first time access to many and especially to the boomer generation. If ahead of the ETF launching, we could have projected between 80 million and 130 million Bitcoin holders, we have to acknowledge that most of those were Gen Z or millennials. And so with the spot ETF, we see a new um, population onboarding to Bitcoin. And Bitcoin's price has always been driven by adoption and expansion of use case. I really appreciate focusing on, on kind of the, the structural and long term uh, elements that are happening here. But I want to just go a little short term real quick. I always find it so interesting about the 24-7 trading patterns of, of crypto, right? And when we left the show Friday, we were talking about similar themes. But there's a lot of liquidity, a lot of trading that goes on over the weekend, some of that in the Asia session. I just wonder if you look at that and see any concentration of activity by geography, if it's happening in North America or it's happening in, in different parts of the world. So Bitcoin is, of course, a 24-7 market. The introduction of the ETF has allowed a bit of a break to the um, attention that's needed to be paid to weekends um, and after hours, and that much of the movement in Bitcoin has been generated by excitement and flows um, in the ETF products. Now, all of that said, of course, our attention is more on the long-term Bitcoin trends, including price trends. And while we could expect to see some um, periods of consolidation along the way, I expect we end the year significantly higher than we're at now. Going back to the underlying innovation that therefore now gets us from not only seeing Bitcoin as an asset class that has far more in demand and across different stereotypes of people, but I'm also interested in what therefore is made of the asset itself. Much of the issue is ultimately it's the gold because when well, we're not going to do much more in terms of actual use cases and smart contracts because it was expensive and, and difficult to scale. But you're solving that problem with some of the companies you invest in. What have the ETFs, for example, brought to bear in terms of innovation? So this is really interesting. We work with founders that are attempting to solve the problem of both um, pathways to adoption as well as expansion of Bitcoin use cases. Much of that is happening with Bitcoin the asset on Bitcoin's core protocol, but we're also seeing a flourishment of development and developer activity even in Bitcoin layer twos. It's notable that the 24-month growth of Lightning Network, for example, which is Bitcoin's primary payment technology, um, was over 1,200% between the period of 2021 and 2023, um, giving us a, a sort of base of monthly transaction volume of over 7 million transactions. Now, but there's tailwinds to adoption for Lightning Network by the introduction of new Lightning Network related protocols by Stillmark portfolio company Lightning Labs. And by that, I mean that we expect to see the migration of stable coins from an altcoin environment, Ethereum or Tron, to Bitcoin via Lightning Protocol taproot assets, which will allow other digital assets to trade on Lightning Network in a more efficient and economical way. And it, on, on top of that, Lightning Network offers the benefit of being more scalable in terms of transactions, transaction throughput, because you can expand transaction volume without needing to commit those transactions back to a base blockchain and take up block space. We're also seeing the introduction of protocols that enable Bitcoin um, to be used as a suitable payment for the AI space mm. and for payments for API calls. And what that means is that we can start to really use Bitcoin to unlock some of the native value of the web and, and Internet broadly.